Argentina, November 2009. Hundreds of people are out weathering a hot night in the town of Joaquin de Gonzalez. Suddenly, the sky begins to glow and hundreds watch in terror as a strange, gigantic, luminous ship moves toward the hydroelectric power station on the Juramento River. The object hovers for several minutes and then disappears, but not before over one million people are plunged into total darkness. Did a single UFO cause a blackout of over 100 square miles? If extraterrestrials are really showing up, we have to ask why. Obviously, this isn't a show of force, because let's face it, we'd be gone if it was a show of force. Their technology is so far advanced from us. The answer may be found decades earlier in events that took place on U.S. soil. According to a report by the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, the 1950s experienced a wave of UFO sightings that were linked to electromagnetic activity, the Leveland, Texas incident. Leveland, Texas, November 2nd, 1957. Dozens of witnesses report lights in the sky, hovering for over three hours. A signed statement by a Leveland patrolman gives terrifying details of the incident. I saw a strange looking flash, which looked to be down the roadway. The flash went from east to west and appeared to be close to the ground. As the lights descend to a busy stretch of roadway, 10 vehicles are stopped dead in their tracks. Residents all over town report power being drained from the car engines. When the lights disappear into the sky, the vehicles start and continue on their way, undamaged. America's top secret UFO unit, Project Blue Book, immediately investigates the incident. They determine UFOs may be using a type of electromagnetic interference. Edward Ruppelt, former chief of Project Blue Book admits, we had reports of radiation and induction fields in connection with UFOs. The 1957 wave of electromagnetic cases presents, quote, a whole new dimension to UFO investigation. Could this alien electromagnetic phenomena be used to disable more than car batteries and headlights? Following the Second World War, the installation of massive power grids allowed America to triple its energy consumption. Could this sudden leap in energy usage be attracting alien attention? Exeter, New Hampshire, 1965. A small, picturesque New England town. But the quiet atmosphere is shattered one afternoon as multiple witnesses report a series of glowing orbs descending from the skies and tapping directly into power lines. Local police arrive on the scene as an Air Force bomber appears in the sky. The UFO quickly flies off with the plane in pursuit. But what happens just nine weeks later will transform the power industry forever. November 9th, 1965. A mother and her children observe a fireball streaking across the sky over Syracuse, New York. As it passes, the lights in their home flicker ominously. November 9th, 1965. The largest blackout the continent has ever seen descends on North America. The Great Northeastern Blackout plunged 30 million people across two countries into total darkness. Eight eastern U.S. states and much of southern Canada are left without electricity. Syracuse Airport, New York. Planes beginning their descent are met by a pitch black runway. Within one minute of the blackout, passengers and the deputy aviation commander at the Syracuse Airport witness a massive 150-foot fiery disk moving across the sky. As the airport plunges into darkness, a flight instructor and his student begin their descent toward the tarmac. While preparing for landing, they witness another strange glowing light over the nearby clay substation, a superhighway of power. Then, at 5.27 p.m., power ceases for approximately 25 million people. New York City rush hour descends into chaos. Loaded elevators stop in the shafts and 800,000 commuters are stranded in subway tunnels. Above ground, stoplights fail 
Traffic jams extend miles in every direction, and hundreds of thousands of people rush into the dark streets. A bright light in the sky appears above the darkened city. Is it the same UFO witnessed at the Clay substation? Or is a second mysterious craft draining New York City of every kilowatt of power? When the New York Power Authority dispatches a team to the Clay substation, they are allegedly met by FBI agents. But while looting and fires grip the city, the Power Authority's investigation finds nothing out of the ordinary, and power is restored 13 hours later. The FBI refuses to comment or even acknowledge their involvement. But why would a power outage even require multiple agents of the FBI? Over the ensuing weeks, a media frenzy speculates that an alien craft is the cause of the blackout. Life magazine, one of the most respected magazines ever published, runs a photo with the caption, Could this be a UFO? But it isn't until three years later that the possibility of alien interference is investigated. The U.S. government's House Committee on Science and Astronautics holds a special session posium on unidentified flying objects. Washington, D.C., 1968. James McDonald, a renowned professor at the Institute for Atmospheric Physics, shares his UFO findings. McDonald has been granted unprecedented access to eyewitness testimony government documentation, and even the top secret blue book files on UFO activity. McDonald warns, there is a puzzling and quite disturbing coincidence between the sightings and power blackouts. Greatly expanded attention to the UFO problem is urgently needed. McDonald's findings make headlines and send shockwaves through the American power structure. That same year, Renowned physicist Edward Condon and his team present a highly anticipated government UFO report to the scientific community. Many believe the answer to the UFO question may finally be at hand. The Condon Report. One critic described the report as the most influential public document concerning the scientific status of this UFO problem. Hence, all current scientific work on the UFO problem must make reference to the Condon Report. Industry welcomes a scientific report being applied to the UFO phenomena. One such leader is the Ford Motor Company, struggling to understand increasing incidents of UFOs draining power from cars all across America. NICAP, the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, offers its help to the government in studying the alleged sightings and their mysterious consequences. Numerous tests and simulations are run based on the electromagnetic evidence, but they are unable to determine how the cars were immobilized. It seems the day of disclosure could finally be at hand. Washington, D.C., 1969. Reports of UFOs siphoning power, immobilizing cars, and causing citywide blackouts have raised concern with big business, media, and the scientific community. In response, the U.S. government commissions the Condon Report to determine the truth. But their official findings may be anything but the Condon Report cover-up. A leaked memo is discovered that rips the Condon investigation apart. Accusations emerge of a government cover-up in the memo, one lead researcher referred to the search for extraterrestrials as nonsense. NICAP immediately withdraws its involvement, claiming the investigation is a sham and no real results were ever intended. In the face of mounting evidence and hundreds of eyewitness accounts, the Condon Report still states, Nothing has come from the study of UFOs in the past 21 years that has added to scientific knowledge. Careful consideration leads us to conclude that further extensive study of UFOs probably cannot be justified. On the heels of the Condon Report, the government suddenly ceases all investigations into UFO phenomenon. The Air Force officially closes Project Blue Book on December 17, 1969. 
James McDonald addresses the media before the report's release and claims the investigations were designed to fail. A newspaper article of the day states, he repeated the accusation that the Central Intelligence Agency had ordered the Air Force to debunk UFO reports. And so that was a really a policy that was implemented back in 1953 through the CIA and essentially that continues to this very day where most scientists, most people who occupy senior positions in the bureaucracy or in the media or any position of influence, if they talk about this topic, they will be very easily ridiculed. It appears the government would go to any lengths to control information about UFO presence. But what it could not control was the escalating threat. Throughout the next decade, America develops a very different kind of power to feed its insatiable need. One that may put us directly on extraterrestrial radar. By 1977, tensions over economic concerns and a North American energy crisis have the population on edge. U.S. President Carter informs the American people the energy crisis is a clear and present danger to our nation. But is Carter referring to the Middle East oil crisis or an alien threat? July 12th, New York State. The city that never sleeps is strangely quiet. The serial murderer known as the Son of Sam has recently claimed his sixth victim. But New York is facing an even more shocking, unearthly assault. While driving home, a family witnesses two unidentified craft descending on the nuclear power plant at Indian Point. The highway is soon filled with parked cars and onlookers, watching in awe as the glowing crafts hover over the plant. Reportedly, they are eerily silent. Red, green, and blue lights rotate on the top of the crafts. Are they monitoring the Indian Point nuclear facility? There are UFO cases where they would appear and actually shut down the nuclear facility, sometimes for minutes on end. They would have an actual physical effect on the base. Eventually, dozens of witnesses report seeing UFOs that night. The very next day, just 30 miles south of Indian Point nuclear power plant, New York City is hit with another devastating blackout. Hundreds of stores and homes are looted. Rampant arson destroys entire neighborhoods. 35 blocks of Broadway alone are destroyed. Police and firemen struggle to maintain some kind of order, but the city is in a state of total chaos. Over 55 police are injured, and over 4,500 people are arrested. In the morning, as the sun begins to rise, several fires still rage across the city. New York City Mayor Abe Beam told the press, the blackout has threatened our safety and has seriously impacted our economy. We've been needlessly subjected to a night of terror in many communities that have been wantonly looted and burned. New York City eventually rebuilt and recovered. But in the decade to come, mankind would find new ways to feed its thirst for power and technology. Did our escalating reliance on power make us even more vulnerable to alien interference? UFO sightings over nuclear facilities are still occurring all around the world. Why are UFOs attracted to nuclear power? Is it merely a convenient source of fuel? If so, the greater question is, what would happen if our nuclear output fails to meet their increasing needs?